Welcome back. I have received a package from uh, a friend, Mindflare Retro. He has his own YouTube channel. Please check check it out. And uh, he sent me simple C64 card. This is a untested cartridge, so I'm going to look at it and see how it is. So it was a template uh, made by Jim Brain, which uh, Mindflare Retro took interest in. And uh, it was a discussion over at CBM Hackers. Yeah, so this is uh, the intro number two. <laughs> because the more I work on this, it's not so simple anymore. Because it is a design in progress, I think. And I also learned that it's Jim Brain's 50 minutes uh, mashup. But it's lacking uh, information how to uh, configure this. A simple document would have uh, surfaced very much, but uh, instead I have to be a hacker to make this work for now. Anyway, I hope you, uh, you find this video inter interesting, because um, it's interesting to find out how things work, you know? <laughs> so, and I'm sure with the correct documentations uh, and uh, some uh, modifications it will be a nice little design. During this discussion, uh, I tried to figure out why uh, we have these jumpers there, what this uh, means. And, uh, so I looked up line, as uh, Marcus Brenner has made a uh, write up here. Once a game comes into here, um, like here for example, then you can have the ROM or it can replace the basic. So. And there are many different ways, and but I still didn't get it. Who is setting what, and what does it mean? To get a sense of what these uh, signals are, let's look at the schematic, and uh, in this case, let's look at the cartridge port in more detail. And also, let's look at the PLA, and then we have also some helpers around the PLA, but let's uh, ignore that for now. So here we can see the cartridge expansion port, and you can see there's X ROM and game. Now these signals goes in on the PLA, and uh, so this tells me, since they come in on the left side, they are input to the PLA. And the PLA is the memory map uh, device. So you have the top part, the last part of the address bus from the CPU, together with a lot of other signals, but however, those signals in largely uh, dictate which uh, strobe or chip select it will pull on. So, and then you can also see here. In our case, when we attach XROM and GAME, depending on which one is low, or both of them, we will get a room high or a room low back to the cartridge. So let's see what that does. Now there's a page called World of Johnny, and uh, I really like that because it has a, uh, a nice write-up about this problem with the cartridges. So we have 8K cartridges, which is usually put in uh, room low. Then you have to set game equals 1 and x room equals 0. And then you have uh, 16K cartridges. Uh, and we are talking about game here, so I think. And um, then game is 0 and x room is 0. And here is the problem. Now we know that game and x room, they are going into the Commodore 64 and from the Commodore 64 we have room high and room low. So we have two room high and room low but only one chip. Hmm. Well if you look at this picture from uh, World of Johnny he shows you how to connect a uh, 16k cartridge. So in that case you have two 64 bit rooms. So or 8K rooms. And you can also see that the X and GA are connected together on the ground. So that's okay. And from the 
Where are you guys? There you go, there's a room low. Let's do one of the chips. Chips enable and chip uh, output enable. And the room high goes to the other chip. Chip enable and output enable. So, how can you do that with only one chip? So, because I don't have uh, the 64 thing. Now I see I have uh, bought this device, C128, which is supposed to carry 16K in only one chip. Now if we go back to this copper light product, you can see it has two diodes. And the reason for these two diodes is, uh, I think uh, Jim Brain talked about it here, um, the two dies and one of the little resistors create a wired OR gate to select the room when either room L or room high, room low or room high are low. Fairly easy though, so we have to use some fast uh, recovery diodes then. So we need to connect diodes on these two to get a single chip select when either of these two signals are going low. And we also need to bank because we don't have one 8k we have two times 8k so <laughs> how do we do that then well if room l is low then room high is always high so only one of them is high at, at once so we can use um, room l as a bank so that will put be put on the last address pin so have a look at that so the last address line on the 2764 is 812 and on the 27128 it's 813 because it has an, an additional address line. And now we can see we have 813 here so uh, that was also something that confused me because uh, it says 813 jumper for Commodore 128 support. Uh, someone chimed in on the discussion and wanted that so uh, you, we have the two diodes connecting these two together with a resistor and then to the chip select. Then from room L we will pull a line up to A13. See how that goes. It looks like he wants a jumper here and a jumper there and maybe one there. And uh, it doesn't make sense to me to jump to either ground to game or ground to X room because it could be X room and game together at the same time and uh, we'll have a look at this A13 uh, how this is wired I, I wonder what this uh, jumper is jumping to uh, we have A13 there on the left and uh, that will be on the right on this side and you can see the other one goes down there so that's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H so let's have a look uh, now maybe it's not a mistake maybe it's a Commodore 128 problem oh yeah I forgot to check where this in the middle is so well if you look in the back you can see that it is routed up here let's see what that is 4, 5, 6, 7 so that's output enable how about chip enable? Hmm. Okay, I see what you have done there. Um, chip enable is grounded. So this chip is always selected. And uh, only the output enable is controlled. So that means that the chip is put on the bus only when output enable is selected. But then we can use every room. So <laughs> I didn't have to buy another chip. I could have just used 256. So this is uh, turning into a bit uh, more complicated than I thought. Yeah, I hope that helped uh, my Retro. I uh, have to be brutally honest about this. I wouldn't call it uh, 1.0 at this point, actually. And um, uh, I think this has potential, but it needs some modifications, of course. And it's not like the world rotates around Eagle, you know. So it would have come a long way if there was a PDF of the schematics here. So Jim put out the uh, PDF, that would be nice. So for the resistors, this is what it boils, boils down to. So the schematic says A15, A14 and A13. 
and the 128 chip says VPP, PGM and A13 so, so connect it to 5 volt, connect it to this one also to 5 volt and this one uh, will be uh, disconnected so because we are using this for room L oh. yes so this is what I'm doing with room H and room L uh, I'm allowing those two signals to pull this line low they can only pull it low because that's the way the diodes is pointing and um, when they are not low they will be the room edge is high and it will pull upward and able high not sure if it's a good thing I might actually it's just that it's um, I can piggyback these two but um, it would possibly be better to connect this to 5 volt like this so but for now I'm going to try that so so there you go in Winwise there's a command line card convert the CRT was made because there's so many configuration of uh, CR of uh, cartridges like for example uh, you have game cartridges which have a uh, fixed X-ROM and game then you have stealth uh, kind of stealth cartridges which are uh, like a final cartridge or something like that which are letting you use the Commodore exactly as it is with the same memory map and then when you push a button it comes into place and starts uh, uh, controlling this uh, extra main game so anyway uh, <laughs> so you can see extra is zero game is zero and it's a 16k game cartridge you can also see the start of the ROM so I have burned that I've already tested it on the bread bin, so and it works on both machines, bread bin white commodore. Ta-da! I love it. Ingri and I love this game. So 16k room on a single chip, so that works. So I had to clean the cartridge port though with some content cleaner. But after that everything was fine. So yeah. Uh, thank you very much man, thank you for the cartridge and sending me and giving me the opportunity to test it out. I really appreciate it, appreciate it even though it did, didn't sound like it when I uh, worked on it, but just got so frustrated about the artwork and stuff, so yeah. Thank you very much, and uh, see you another time. Bye bye.